My name is Chris Jones. I'm the New Vision Professor of Chemical and Biomolecular Engineering at the Georgia Institute of Technology. I'm pleased to have Professor Sully Olenek here today of the University of Michigan, who was selected as the 2014 ACS Catalysis Lectureship winner. Congratulations, Sulio. Thank you, Chris. Professor Linick is being recognized for his work developing a framework for understanding plasmonic effects in heterogeneous photocatalysts. Additionally, he's done groundbreaking work elucidating how the electronic structure of metallic and bimetallic nanoparticles affects the catalytic properties. So thank you, Sulio, for being with us, and congratulations again. Thank you, Chris. Uh, um, first, I would also like to, uh, to thank you and the journal for, for recognizing my work through this award. I would like to thank also the ACS Division of uh, Catalytic Science and Technology. I would like to use this opportunity to thank my mentors, particularly Professor Mark Berto, who is my, my PhD advisor, and Professor Matthias Scheffler, who is my postdoctoral advisor. And I would also like to thank a, a, a large number of my students who have, through a number of years, really contributed to, to these areas that you mentioned in, in your introduction and uh, made uh, very important contributions in these fields. Growing up in Bosnia and developing a curiosity about science as a youngster, uh, what led you to decide to study uh, chemistry and physics as you got older? And ultimately, what brought you to the United States for your university studies? So this is a, a very long story, and I'm going to try to, to, to uh, shorten it up a little bit here. So basically, I was in, uh, I, as I was graduating from high school in Bosnia in 1992, the war was, was uh, starting to take place in, 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 in Bosnia. And, uh, Around the end of 1992, my family and me uh, basically got thrown out of the country by, by, by the Serbian forces, which are moving in and, and capturing large areas of Bosnia. So we ended up in a refugee camp in, in, in Croatia. And after a, a, a couple of months in that refugee camp, I actually transferred to Slovenia and spent about over, an, over a year in, in, in Slovenia. And at that time, I was actually playing, uh, playing soccer, really do, didn't do, wasn't doing any science. But my mom had this uh, idea that really she should save all my uh, transcripts and, and she translated them to English and, and send them to an organization here in the United States, which was, which was trying to help identify promising Bosnian students and kind of find the, the, the scholarships for them so that they can come here and enroll in, in, in undergraduate programs in the United States. So I basically got, got lucky that I was selected to, to and, and I received a scholarship from Westchester University. I enrolled in Westchester University. I had a, always have been uh, uh, interested in science, particularly physics, math, and chemistry. And I started uh, an undergraduate program in, uh, in physics with minor in, in mathematics. And I've, done, I've also taken lots of, uh, lots of chemistry, chemistry classes. So as I was graduating from Westchester University in, in, with a degree in physics, I started realizing really that if I want to have a professional career in physics, it would be, be very challenging uh, to find a, a uh, unemployment, I guess, for somebody like me coming from a, uh, being an international student. So uh, I decided to apply for a, a, a chemical engineering department at the uh, University of Delaware, really hoping that I can identify a project that's a, at the crossroads of, between physics, chemistry, and math. And I was lucky really to, to, to be accepted in the program and then to take a project uh, with uh, Mark Barteau working on uh, physics and chemistry on, 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 of single, single crystal metallic surfaces. So it really matched very nicely my, my background. Moving to the University of Delaware then and joining the Barteau lab to study oxidation catalysis, you joined one of the premier labs in catalysis and chemical engineering in the United States. And now today you're primarily known as a catalysis scientist. What about the study of catalysis continues to intrigue you and continues to motivate you to uh, go in new directions? I'm interested in, in uh, chemical reactions at surfaces, quite a bit of chemical physics and physical chemistry that happens at the, at the interfaces. And uh, by extension, I'm interested in, in heterogeneous catalysis, electrocatalysis and photocatalysis, because in all of these systems, you're really dealing with a chemical reaction that's taking pa place at the interface. My background working in, 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 in uh, ultra, starting with working in ultra vacuum science, uh, uh, like learning early on a number of uh, microscopy and spectroscopy techniques, moving on and, and learning uh, density functional theory calculations, uh, particularly focused on the, on, the, on the chemistry and physics of on metal surfaces, is really well suited to tackle problems that I'm, that I'm trying to tackle, mainly areas of catalysis, photocatalysis, and electrocatalysis, and physical chemistry and chemical physics behind these technologies. 
One of the elements that you bring to your research is the combination of advanced experimental and theoretical or computational methods. And if we think back a generation or two within the catalysis community, it used to be that theoretical and computational methods were the domain of a few groups in catalysis and experimental methods were the domain of other groups in catalysis. But increasingly, um, scientists of, of our generation are, are working in both theoretical computational methods and experimental methods. Can you talk a little bit about how the, the combination of those two approaches has really helped to enrich your research? I think I, I got lucky early on because I joined a group that was really interesting, interested in introducing uh, the tools of quantum computation, mainly density functional theory, in trying to understand surface chemical reactions. And this was really done out of necessity because we would often identify surface intermediates spectroscopically uh, by measuring their vibrational fingerprint or by measuring their electronic fingerprint. And really we would have a hard time pinpointing geometry of those, of those structures. With the advancement of density functional theory calculations, uh, we, we, we basically acquired a tool that allowed us to start probing that vibrational fingerprints and electronic fingerprints of these intermediates and basically start, think, start, start to identify these intermediates with, 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 I would say, high degree of accuracy. So I started doing calculations along with experiments in Mark Barteau's group, and then when I moved to Fritz Haber Institute, working under supervision of Matthias Scheffler, that's where I really uh, dug deep into uh, density functional theory calculations and, and spent uh, over a year really trying to, to master that, that area of research. Uh, related to this other question about, uh, about uh, new scientists trying to use both of these tools, I think it is, it is critical that we embrace any new tools that's, that's appearing on, on, on the scene. And I think that computational catalysis and, and density functional theory calculations in particular are allowing us to answer some questions that really have no way of answering any other way. And really you don't have to be uh, 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 an expert and developer of quantum codes in order to be able to apply them in limited areas such as trying to, for example, a fingerprint an intermediate on a surface based on electronic fingerprint, based on the vibrational fingerprint, and so on. So I look at it as, a, as a just another tool that is helping me answer some questions that I'm trying to answer in these broad fields of catalysis, photocatalysis, electrocatalysis. And, and, and I would try to separate here the, 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 the field of computational catalysis, which really deals with using quantum tools, trying to address the questions that I just mentioned, and the field of theoretical quantum chemistry, which is really trying to develop new tools so that we can, we can use them. And we are really not in the field of development. We are more in the, in, we are trying to use these tools to, to understand uh, what's happening on surfaces, basically. Celia, one of the, the hottest areas in catalysis right now is photocatalysis. And uh, that's not something that you worked on during your PhD work. So as you in developed your independent program at the University of Michigan, what motivated you to uh, move into that area and uh, what excites you about your current work in photocatalysis? Well, I think what, what motivated me is that, that in, there are a number of really important contemporary issues that are related with the technology of photocatalysis. So for example, one of the holy grails of our field, I would say, is photocatalytic splitting of water to, uh, to uh, get a, a cheap uh, hydrogen. And this is a problem that really hasn't been solved. And I think we are not even close to solving this issue. And I think that uh, with my background, again, in, 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 in trying to understand reactions on surfaces, really that background lends itself to, to the issues that, are, that need to be addressed in the, in the field of photocatalysis and photochemistry. Uh, again, I was motivated by the problem of photocatalytic water splitting. We kind of stumbled into the field of plasmonics and really started to realize how little is really known about chemical reactions that are driven, for example, by electrons on a metal surface as opposed to chemical reactions that are driven by phonons, or is it the case in, in, in thermal, thermal catalysis. So, uh, so, and I think we are in, the, in these fields, we are just scratching the surface. I, I, I don't know whether there's going to be some commercial impact and when it's going to happen, but I think from a point of view of fundamental physics and chemistry of surfaces and what's happening at the surfaces and at the interfaces, there's a number of important physical phenomena and chemical phenomena that, that, that take place when light is shine on a metallic object, such as a plasmonic nanoparticle, or on a semiconductor object, and when you have a reactive environment in the presence of this object. A large number of the PhDs that you've worked with have decided to pursue academic careers. 
is there something in particular that you do in working with them that has made them quite successful in uh, achieving those positions? Well, I, I don't think that there's anything in particular in our group uh, that, uh, that, that, that motivates them to go down the path of academic uh, career. I do feel that we focus on fundamental issues quite a bit, which, which in, 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 uh, in their minds might make them a little bit closer to an academic, uh, academic establishment. But really the idea that we have is really to try to develop very competent catalysis scientists. And, and I encourage them to do whatever they feel like they want to do. If they want to go to industry, we have a number of them that have gone to industry that are having a very successful career in, in, um, in industrial environment. And I have five of them that are uh, going, have gone or, or are going to start very soon their independent uh, academic career. And I have no doubt that all of them are going to be very successful because I'm very comfortable with the background that they have and, and the knowledge that they acquired while at the University of Michigan. Uh, I think they have a very broad knowledge of, of, of um, catalysis, fundamental as, as well as applied issues of catalysis. You're still in the uh, initial stages of your academic career, I would say. You're still a young scientist. You have many fruitful years of research ahead of you. Uh, what do you think about the future of catalysis? And in particular, what areas are you most excited about? So really predicting the future is not uh, uh, something that I have historically been very good at, but I'll try. So, so what I see is happening that, that we, we have a number of, of um, interested chemical conversions that, 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 that are of interest at least to me. So for example, we have a bit boom in fracking industry. We have now access to cheap and, abundant, uh, and abundant methane. Chemistry of methane is becoming important, and it has been important for a, for a large number of years now. Uh, I think that's one direction that's, that's, that's worth pursuing. The other one is, you know, we have a biomass as a feedstock, and, and, and these molecules are often over-functionalized. So the question is, how do you bring down these functionalities uh, in a biomolecule without really destroying it completely and going down to H2 and CO and then rebuilding it back again? A very important issue that I have a great deal of interest is, is just the issue of selectivity in heterogeneous catalysis. How do we design heterogeneous catalytic systems that can go from a reactant state to a product state with selectivity that approach 100%? Uh, I think that with advancements in, 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 in quantum computing, with advancements in, 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 in synthesis, our ability to better control uh, solid surfaces at atomistic level, and with the advancement in in-situ spectroscopy, we are really at the stage now where we can start tackling these issues of selectivity and maybe designing a much more complicated catalytic structures that could be much more selective. And finally, I also think that, that the issue, trying to break down the natural limitations of a catalytic process. So for example, we have these volcano plots in heterogeneous catalysis, which apply in many, many reactions. And basically, we tell us that there are limits to either activity of a selectivity of a solid material. The question is, how do we break down these volcano plots? How do we move away from a concept of a single material catalyst, almost single site catalyst, where this single site is asked to perform a number of elementary steps uh, very well, to maybe more complicated structures where we have a multi-sites that are communicated with each other through, through cleverly designed membranes or, or, or pathways for molecular diffusion and, and, and so on. So these are the areas that I, I am thinking about and, 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 and trying to contribute to. Congratulations again, Sulio, on being selected as the 2014 ACS Catalysis Lectureship winner. I'm very proud to have you associated with the journal ACS Catalysis, and I wish you luck in all of your future endeavors. Yeah, thank you, Chris.